John here, guys, and today we're talking about this new banquet table that I've got to be able to sit 12 people for Thanksgiving. Ah, oh, these are my Thanksgiving pants. <laughs> okay, no, just kidding. This is actually the Shark Bite TX5R. This is finally the 20 by 20 video transmitter solution that we've been asking for with the Shark Bite system. But wait, guys, there's a bit of a problem. Look how long it is. 20 by 20, it seems like it's more like 20 by 40. I mean, it's so long. What frames can this thing fit in? Um, that we will be testing very, very soon. But one thing that is for sure is that they've made a number of improvements over the S or whoop board version. The mounting is a lot more friendly for a lot of frames. Now there's still not an anchor that holds the MIPI cable in place, but it does have sort of a little spring loaded action on there. So it should hold it in okay. One of the things that I really, really like is that there is now a little screw hole that will hold your UFL on. So for racers that are planning on trying to use this solution in order to crash very, very hard, you don't have to worry about that UFL connector popping off. The other nice thing is that there is a connector now for the cable so that you can plug and unplug uh, if you're working on your quad very easily like you would a DJI camera. You won't actually have to solder to the board itself. That is pretty cool. I think I'm gonna actually use that. It comes with some gummies to be able to put into your stack now, the unfortunate thing is that this is probably for the racing and freestyle community, um, but any frames out there that are used to being able to fit the Vista unit that is also 20 by 20 in the back, this is probably not going to fit unless they've left a lot of room for you. It's very, very long out the back side. I don't know if you'd want to put it sideways either because it's going to stick out the side of your frame. Um, like a dog sticking its head out the window of a passing car. Now your dog might enjoy that as you're cruising around the neighborhood, but I don't know how much your dog would enjoy that flying 100 miles an hour on a race course. Probably not so much. Um, so this is a little bit of what we want, not everything. It is an incremental improvement. The video output is still limited to 225 milliwatts, uh, both of those options, the same as the Whoop board. So why the significant price increase? The Whoop board is $50. This is $88.99, bucks. So it's basically $40 more, but it has the same exact power outputs and not really any additional features other than it can anchor the thing on there. Supposedly this one can operate via smart audio, but is that really even a significant enough um, feature to be able to justify that extra $40. I don't like this price point. This price point basically puts your finished solution um, at about $160 to $170 for your video system on TrackBite. That is right the same smack dab pricing uh, as the DJI system, which this does not compare favorably to. The Woo board at least can get you down close to about $110 if you use a budget antenna, and that's much more attractive. $50 cheaper per build. If you had five builds, that's quite a bit of savings. This offers you no savings. In fact, it's uh, depending on what kind of antenna you use, it could actually end up being slightly more than the DJI system. I don't like that at all. I don't like the size of this. What we need is an option that has better penetration, better power output um, per milliwatt. I don't know if that's just a limitation of the actual system itself. It may not ever get better penetration, but it's really frustrating to not even be able to go behind anything larger than a very tiny bush without the image breaking up uh, completely. Far, far, far less penetration than analog or DJI. Uh, it's funny because analog is vastly superior at penetrating nature foliage, trees, leaves, it can penetrate this the best. DJI is like the opposite. It's technological wizardry uh, means that it's very weak at penetrating foliage uh, that analog is good at, but it's super strong at urban environments, multi-pathing, it eats it up, it actually makes it stronger. So garages, buildings, uh, anything with metal, uh, the DJI system becomes stronger. In those scenarios, analog becomes very, very weak. This is weak at both, very weak at both. It's actually weaker than both of them um, at their weaknesses. So that's still a little bit of a limitation on the system, but this board itself 
is an advancement, but we need it smaller. We need it at the very minimum, the same size as like a TBS 69, which is about the same footprint as a uh, flight controller. Uh, if you can make it 2020, but actually stay within the bounds of that, then a lot more people will be able to fit it in builds. This is gonna be very clunky and you're gonna have to have custom frames to, in order to fit this in many instances. Um, I'm actually gonna be flying it on the 533 Switchback HD prototype that they have sent me. Um, so we're gonna check that out and it does have the room to fit this. Now that prototype can actually fit this shark bite system or dji so if i'm going to be racing on hd um, either one comes with its own set of limitations which limitations am i more likely to go with um, that's going to be the real question stay tuned for a video we're going to go head to head to head at the night spot on a track we're going to do analog versus dji versus shark bite and see which one performs the best are they all acceptable for racing um, image quality aside, racers care about latency and penetration in order to get by on the tracks. Now on an open multi-GP race field where there's no obstacles, all of them will probably perform pretty good, but can you handle the rigors of the night spot? That's what we're going to be answering very soon. So stay subscribed so you don't miss it. Thanks guys.